In the past few weeks, China has allowed its national currency, the yuan, or more precisely the renminbi, to be devalued by up to 5%. Should Macedonia do the same? Should it devalue its national currency, the Macedonian dinar? Devaluation is good for exports. Let me tell you why. A manufacturer, a factory, sells goods in Germany. They get paid euros. A hotel in Ohrid sells packages and rooms to tourists from the Netherlands. They also get paid with euros. A software or animation firm in Macedonia sells services to a French studio. They get paid with euros. Now, all three take the euros to the bank and convert the euros into Macedonian dinars. When they convert, they get 62 dinars for every euro. But after a devaluation, they will get 70 dinars per euro. With 70 dinars, their income is much higher, but their expenses in Macedonian dinars stay the same. They pay the same salaries, they pay the same rent, they pay the same for electricity, nothing changed. The local prices did not change. Only the amount of Macedonian dinars that they are getting for the euros that they earn abroad, this amount goes up. Consequently, the profits of export companies go up and they can reduce the prices of their goods and services and compete with goods and services from countries which did not devalue their national currencies. Now this is called competitive devaluation. It's a devaluation whose sole purpose is to increase the competitiveness of the export sector by increasing the profitability of the export sector. But is competitive devaluation enough? If Macedonia devalues its its currency, will there suddenly be a renaissance of exports? Will suddenly Macedonian exports explode and be boosted? Is that a sufficient condition? Well, according to the World Bank and according to the OECD and according to the National Bureau of Economic Research in the United States, the answer is no. There are eight additional conditions for successful exports. The foreign exchange is very important, but there are eight even more important conditions. One, that the products comply with international standards of quality and other demands like sanitary conditions. Number two, that the labor force is productive, that it is not lazy, that it is not obstructive, that it produces a lot more than it gets in wages. The productivity of the labor force is very important as well as the quality of the management. The third condition is that exporters should invest in international marketing, in branding, in research and development, and in intellectual property on a regular basis. The fourth condition is that the regulations in the country, the political interference by the political parties, and the bureaucracy should be very low and very predictable. Additionally, the judiciary should be impartial and functional. The fifth condition, according to these bodies, is that the private sector should not be a rent-seeking sector. It simply means that the private sector should not rely on the state for most of its income. It should rely on external markets, it should rely on domestic consumption, it should rely on consumers, it should rely on other businesses, but it should not rely on the government or the state to provide it with income. The next condition is that the private sector should have extensive contacts in destination markets. And the next condition is that the country should be well integrated into the global transport network. A country that has access to the sea, for instance, is 50% more likely to be rich and to export more. But Macedonia is landlocked, so it should be well integrated into the highway system of Europe and into the railway system of Europe. And finally, exports should be diversified. They should be a product mix 
and a, a mix of destination markets. Unfortunately, when we study Macedonia, we see that none of the eight conditions is satisfied. Macedonia does not meet one of these eight conditions. So, devaluation alone by itself would not be enough. It will only create inflation. Exporters in Macedonia, the Macedonian government, the Macedonian labor force, Macedonian management still have a very long way to go before their exports become competitive in world markets. And the problem is not in the foreign exchange rate, it's in the companies themselves.